This message comes to you from Withenshaw Community Church, Manchester. We hope that you are inspired and challenged by God's Word. What's going on, no matter who's saying what about you, you leave all that to God and you continue on with the great plan that God has got for you. Can you say amen? So I want to minister a little bit this morning out of the book of Psalms chapter 138. And this psalm is special to me this morning because, like I said, God has a plan for our lives. But the plan is that you and I need to allow God to work that plan out. If that plan is not working out, let me tell you something. There's something you're not doing right. There's something that's hindered in the plan of God. And guess what? It's not God. And it's great sometimes to blame the devil, but maybe this morning might be just you and I that were hindered in the plan of God many times in our lives. And I remember this, 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 uh, you know, um, this plan that I'm talking about, as I began to read this psalm, Psalm 138, I'm not going to read the whole psalm, but if you want to read it, you know, it did really bless me, the whole psalm, but just verse A really, really spoke to me. And this is when a, time, a, a lot of you will know I had a very bad accident about eight months ago and I wasn't in church for about three months. I was lying up for three months and I couldn't move for three months. And I had a big, uh, massive thing on my leg, a, a massive pins and it was like a Meccano set. How many know what a Meccano set is? All nails and bolts and plates and all sorts of things in my leg. And I never thought I'd be up in a couple of months and worshiping God, and there's the, the crutch there. I only take the crutch, I told one of the people this morning, I only keep that crutch for sympathy. <laughs> because without the crutch, I get no sympathy. But once I get the crutch, people go, are you all right, Pastor Mike? Are you okay, Pastor Mike? How are you doing, Pastor And we all know a bit of encouragement. Can you say amen? But I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God and the plan of God that God was faithful to me, and he was faithful to his word. And when I sat there for all those months, and you know, we, I do still thank God for the people that have been to see me. A lot of people have come to see me. Not many of them brought any gifts, but that's okay. Uh, but we had, you know, the, what happened to me during that time, I had Patrick, is Patrick here? Patrick? Is he here? There's Patrick, that's my doctor, was my doctor there in the hospital. But that's a story in itself. I'll have to tell you another time about that story and how that came to pass. Or maybe, Pat, or maybe Dr. Patrick, he could tell it in, in, a, in, a, in a testimony or something like that. But it was a tremendous time, and it was a tremendous time where I, I, I you know, God didn't put me there. It was my own fault. I slipped down the stairs. I wasn't watching. The devil didn't push me down the stairs. It's just I wasn't watching. I wasn't doing, you know, I hadn't got those... Uh, eyes in the back of my head open and I just slipped down the stairs and I broke the leg. But in all of that time, you know, God was in my heart and God turned it all around for good. All things happen for good for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Now, I'm not saying this has happened to me because God wanted to put me out somewhere and talk to me. But it, within that, God did. That's exactly what happened. When I was lying up for those months, three or four months with the thing, then I got a, a boot on and then I started moving about and doing my physio and doing all the, the, the different things. But I knew and I have always known that God had a plan for my life. Always had a plan for my life. And this, is, this here to, today is a fulfillment of the plan. Uh, not, a full, not, not a fulfilled plan. It's a fulfillment of the plan. It's an ongoing plan. Can you say amen? It's an ongoing plan. And the verse that I'm going to use this morning just to help, help you this morning as well to know that this plan, that God has this plan for your life also, no matter what your situation or no matter what you're going on or what's going through in your life or in your family or whatever, God's plan is still there and it's still the same and he's got that plan for you. And it says here in verse 8, it says, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Now, that was the word that God gave me as I sat down all those months ago. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hand. And here it says in the, in the New Living Testament, it says that, that verse that says, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So every single thing that concerns me, God will perfect it. But there's another verse in the NTL Bible, and it says the same verse. He says, the Lord will work out his plans for my life. And that's a little bit, it just explains it a little bit better 
The Lord will work out his plans for my life. See, when you and I are young in the Lord, when we first become serious about following God, many times we worry about missing out on the plan of God. You know, we see other people being elevated and, and, and um, God doing great things for God. And we sometimes we're sitting in the background and sometimes we think, you know, we've missed the plan of God. How am I supposed to know the plan of God in my life? How am I supposed to know which college to go to? How am I supposed to, you know, know which subjects to take? How am I supposed to know these things? What career should I follow? Who should I marry? How many single people have we with us this morning? Who shall I marry? Has God got a husband for me? I could give you a great testimony about one girl in their church called Christina. And she was 30 years old. Was she 30 when she got married? She's an amazing testimony. But she had to go to South Africa. That doesn't mean that you've all gone to, to go to South Africa. But God had an amazing uh, uh, plan and purpose in our, in our life and worked that plan and purpose out tremendously. And she said to Mary, because Mary, Mary and her was very close, and she said to Mary one time, she said, Mary, what do I do? She said to me, women's clock is ticking, whatever you, that means. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm getting up there in age, but, you know, I, I need a husband. I need a husband. And Mary said, well, Christina, God knows exactly what you need, but what you need to do, you need to... Allow someone to pursue you. This is the words Mary gave to her. She said, you need someone to, uh, to, to pursue you instead of you pursuing someone else. You just get on with what God is doing in your life and allow God to bring someone into your life that will pursue you. And that's what she was saying to Christina. And the man Christina met, I'm cutting the story really quick and really short. The man Christina met in, in South Africa, he, he, he was actually, he was our employer. He was our, our boss. And uh, she, she said, to, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. <laughs> She'd be listening to the tape. <laughs> she won't. But she said, a boss said to her, um, you know, we've been working together for so long. And she knew him really, really well. And, you know, they'd done a lot of work in, in the kingdom together. And uh, he says to her, but he says, he went to her, you know, and he said, I'm getting feelings for you. And she said, he said, uh, I'd like to pursue you. And those words just came to her. And she, uh, just quick, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. And she, she, she knew that that was God. And, you know, over the months and weeks, you know, they, they prepared for their marriage, you know, doing it uh, properly, you know, with, with, with guidance and counselors and all the different things that need to take place. And she's done the marriage courses and all the different things. And then she phoned me up and she said to, pa she said to me, Pastor Mike, we're coming to get married. We're coming back to get married. And this was on Easter Saturday just on Easter Saturday. She said, we'll get married on Easter Saturday. This is not even my message, but play, play. Well, 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 I'm just t telling you about the goodness of God, you know, how the, God has a plan for you, despite what, now, remember, I was in a boo, and I had a crutch, and I could hardly move, and of course, I was going to get my assistant to step in. It's easy to get your, <laughs> your assistant to step in, especially when he's got two legs. And he did, he did have to step in, in for me to do a funeral. And he stepped in a few times for me in things because he is my assistant. He's working with me. We work together. And uh, uh, I, I do thank God for Pastor Ross as well. And so what happened? Christina phoned me. She said, I, I need you to, to do the wedding. So I said, okay, no problem. And I said to me, how am I going to, get to, to go in? I was doing the wedding in Bolton in the church. And I think there was about two or 300 people at the wedding. A lot of people Christina knew over the years. You know, to, you know, to have friends, you have to prove yourself friendly. They're out there. There's people out there that love you and care about you. There's nobody should be alone. And Christina, she had lots and lots of friends. But over 300 people, two, between two and 300 people, I would say, turned up at the church there in Bolton. So, of course, yours truly was here with his whistle and flu. And what I had to do, I had to force the leg of the... I had to force the leg of the... Didn't, didn't I, I, did, I did have the boot on. I had to force the leg of the trousers over the, the plastic boot because my leg was really sore at that time. And then I was hobbled up and I think Pastor Terence was there and stuff. And a few of the guys were behind me and helping me. I mean, no, it's great to have people in the kingdom that will help you. And these guys were there, you know, when I got up to do the, the sermon... Then when I got up to, got down, I'm just saying to you this morning that God has a plan for your life and God is walking behind the scenes. But there's many things that hinder many times the plan 
of God. So enough about Christina for now. But, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they think they've missed out on God. And they see other people doing great. And they see them doing things for God. And they think, you know, Lord, you've missed me. Lord, you've missed me. I want to tell you this morning that God has not missed you. God's eye is upon you. Even upon the young lad there this morning, like uh, young Elijah. You know, here's a lad. He goes home. as he's spared. And he thinks, hey, nobody's prayed for me. I need somebody to pray. I need someone to pray for me. Um, so, you know, so God sees what we're, we're, God sees us. We're not hidden from God. And many times we've got doubt many times in our heart, in our lives. But this entire psalm it offered me at that time, at that particular situation that I was in, it offered me comfort and assurance. And it offered me hope in God. All of the things that I was going through. It reminds me. You know, this plan of God that in our lives, it reminds me that I don't have to bear the burdens of making good things happen in my, in my life. See, a lot of us want good things to happen in our life, and we strive for those things. But we don't have to strive for those things. Your happiness doesn't depend upon you this morning. Your happiness doesn't depend upon me. Your happiness doesn't depend upon your husband or your wife this morning. Your, your joy or your happiness depends upon that which God is doing in your life. Nobody can make you happy. Nobody can, can, you know, you might think it's happiness. You might think it's happiness for a while. But I want to tell you this morning that God will, it's not just a happiness, because happiness is, is we're waiting for something to happen to make us happy. But God can give us something instead of happiness, and that's joy. He can give us the joy of the Holy Spirit. He can give us the joy of the Holy Spirit this morning. And that joy, as we experience the joy of the Holy Spirit, God can work out those plans within our life. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So today I want to talk to you for a little bit about this truth and how it can work out in our lives this morning. Because we said, the, the title of the message this morning says that the, the plan that God wants to walk out in your life. And he does want to walk it out in life, in our lives. But that doesn't mean that you and I are to live without ambition this morning. It doesn't mean that you and I are to live without vision or live without a sense of direction in our lives. It doesn't mean that we're to wander aimlessly through life every day, waiting day after day for God to blaze the trail for us. How many know that you and I are called? The Bible says few are chosen, but we're called. We're called by God, and sometimes that's what keeps you. That's what keeps you, that's what keeps you going is the call of God upon your life. The, the call upon your life, the call and knowing that God has got everything in control and there's things going on along in the background that you know nothing about. See, when I was lying there for those three months, there was things going on in the background that I didn't even know about, that God was walking out, that God was walking out. I read a, has Emma gone into this? Yeah, she's gone. I read a book one time uh, with John Grisham. Has anyone ever read any John Grisham's books? He's a secular writer. He's a, 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 it's a non-Christian book, but a lot of his books are, he's a Christian that writes these books. A lot of these books are like, uh, He'll mention scripture to them and mention dip, different things. And, but this book, particular book I read, it was a novel called The Brethren. And I remember reading it. The main character in the book was a guy called Aaron Lake. And they wanted this guy to be president of the United States. But what they were doing, they knew that this guy could be president and they knew that he could be a great influence and they, that he could help these guys. So what they decided to do, they decided to do everything in their power to launch this guy forward. So he didn't have to, all he had to do was smile and stay pretty for the people. But there was something going on behind all of these guys were campaigning be, behind. These were powerful people, and they were walking behind the scenes. They were orchestrating events to get him elected because he could serve their purpose. And this morning, you and I are called to serve a purpose. And there's somebody behind the scenes, and he's walking out things that you and I don't even know. He's walking out things that you and I don't even know. He's there. Behind, behind the scenes. See, we're not alone in charting the course of our life. Someone much more powerful than you and I is at work. And that's God himself. 
because it's his plan this morning. It's his plan for your life, and he's walking behind the scenes. His plan, the Bible says, is a good plan. It's a good plan. Jeremiah 29 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. They're plans for good and not for disaster. Not for disaster, but to give you a hope and a future. So God has got those plans for you. God has a great plan for you, but God is committed to making that plan come to reality. But in order to do that, you and I have to do our part. See, there's a lot of people, someone said to me yesterday about there's great potential in the world, but he said there's more potential. Was it? I think maybe you said it. Uh, uh, he said there's more potential in the graveyard. Because lots of people go and get buried and they never fulfill the plan or call of God for their life. So there's, there's a lot of potential in the graveyard this morning. But how many know we have great potential and God is committed to making the plan a reality in our lives. But you and I, like I said this morning, we have to do our part. We have to yield ourselves to him so he can continue to direct our life. Now we don't hear that word much, yield. How many know what the word yield means? Anybody? Yield. That's what the, surrender. Yeah, it can mean surrender. Does anyone else? Hey, you've been to Ireland. <laughs> She's been to Ireland because there's a triangular sign on the roadway and it says yield. And it means to give way. That's what it means. It gives, gives way. And David show, uh, 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 it, here, David, in the book of Psalm 138, he shows us three qualities that you and I need to strive for in yielding our hearts and yielding our lives to God. We need to develop these qualities in our lives so we can move, so we can be more certain and claim that promise that God has made. See, God has made that promise to each one of us. He says that the Lord will walk out his plans in my life. He will perfect that which concerns me. But you and I need to strive. See, we'd strive for other things. Can you say amen? We'll strive for other things, but there's a lot of laziness many times in the kingdom of God. And we, we sit back and we go, God, if you want it to happen, it'll happen. <laughs> you know, if you want me to, if you want me to do A, B, you know, you'll make it happen. No, friend of mine, God has given you and I choices, and God has given us a free will, and God has given us the plan, and God is saying, "Hey, here's the plan. I want to help you. I want to co-labor with you. I want you to co-labor with me to work this plan out in your life. This is for your life. This is the plan." And. <laughs> The first, the first thing this morning, number one this morning that I'm looking at uh, uh, that, that, that helps you to yield is that you and I must live a life of gratitude. I've learned this just in the last months, Russ. In the last months when I was, you know, when I was at home, you know, all those months ago. I, I was always grateful to God and, you know, good. But, you know, sometimes we, we take it for granted and we just move and flow along because God is blessing us and all that kind of thing. But it began, God began to touch my heart about attitude. And he began to change my heart about attitude. Living a life of gratitude and thankfulness to God. See, because this is the same as living a life of praise. It's the same as living a life of praise. And David begins here by saying in verse 1, he says, I give you thanks, O God, in, in Psalm 138. He says, I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I'll give thanks to your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. See, we've already been given many, many things that we can be thankful to God for. And if God did never done another thing for you and I, if he never done another thing for you and I, we could spend the rest of our life giving him thanks and praising him for what he's already done. Where he's already brought us from. We already have so much to be thankful for. Can you say amen? But the sad thing is many times we've got no gratitude. We've got no thankfulness many times. Many times we've got a wrong attitude towards things.
there's a certain region in Mexico where hot and cold spring uh, hot and cold springs are found side by side. And the women there, they bring their clothes to wash. You know, there's, there's hot springs and the cold springs. And they bring their clothes there to wash in the spring. And they boil them in the hot spring. And then they take them out and they rinse them in the cold spring. And there's this uh, uh, tourist there and he's amazed at this. And he's looking at it and he says to his Mexican guide, he said, they must believe or they must think that Mother Nature is so generous as to supply them with more than enough hot and cold water. And he said, it's funny you should say that, the guide said. He said, because there's actually a lot of grumbling goes on because Mother Nature forgot to supply the soap. And do you know, do you, do you know, sometimes, do you know sometimes we're like that? <laughs> you know, sometimes that's, that's the way we are. Sometimes we just don't see or we don't realize the opportunities to give thanks for. Sometimes, you know, doors of opportunities open up, but we fail to walk through them. Do you know when anyone asks me to do anything in ministry, it doesn't matter who they are. One thing I never say, I never say I'll pray about it. I never say I'm too busy or I never say no because I know that God has a plan for my life and I gave my life to him all of those years ago. And when something comes up and an opportunity comes up and a door opens and somebody asks me to do something, I'll always do it. I look at that my wife of confirmation, but she's not shaking her head. But she knows, she knows that I'll do it. She knows that I'll do it. Because you don't know what that opportunity is going to open up for you and your plan and the plan that God has got for your life. See, David, he gives thanks, he says in verse 2, he says, for God's unfailing love, God's faithfulness in the fact that God promises, God's promises are backed by his honor. So in other words, God is going to bring people into your life and open up opportunities to you. And you're going to have to make sure that you decide which opportunity that you're going to. That's why some of us are still sitting here after 60 or 70 years. We've missed the opportunity. We've missed the plan many times. We've missed the plan many times. See, in verse 3, he goes on to say, as soon as I pray, you answer me. So you don't have to spend, spend four, 24 hours in prayer. All night praying and all night fasting. And they're good. If you want to do that, that's great. But see, when I read the Bible, it says that God answers me straight away. That doesn't mean I don't have to spend time with God because it is good to spend time with God. But you and I need to know that when we call upon him, he will answer us. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I'll give it to you. If you ask anything in the name, of either that's true or God is a liar. See, he's walking in the background, but you and I are waiting for the, to see the prayer. We're waiting to see the thing happening, but it doesn't always, you know, what was that, 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 that sermon? Uh, uh, it's Friday night, but Sunday is coming. It doesn't always happen on the Friday. It doesn't always happy on, happen on the Friday. Sometimes there's a, there's a waiting period or, or there's something that God is doing be, behind the scenes. But you and I can, st can still continue to thank God. We can still continue to thank Him for the things that He's done for us. Can you say amen? Where would you and I be without God this morning? Where would we be without Him? There's many, many things that we can thank God for. We can thank God for every single detail in our lives, every single thing that God is involved in in our lives. And here's a little ex uh, exercise for you that you can put into practice. And it really helps because sometimes we sit down and we try to thank God for something. We think, I can't remember anything. I can't. What, what can I thank Him for? See, we can thank God for every single thing that comes into our lives. We can thank God for every person that comes into our lives. We can thank Him when we wake up in the morning. We can thank Him for the bed. We can thank Him for the blanket. We can take, thank Him for the warmth. We can thank Him for the alarm. We can thank Him for every single thing. And that's before we even get out to start anything, to even start our day. There's many, many things here that we can thank God for. Can you say amen? We can thank God that we've got hot and running cold water. We've got plumbing. Some of you won't remember. Um, give me age away now, Rachel. We used to have a, an outdoor toilet. It was outside in the backyard of a little shed. And in the kitchen, 
believe me, that's, you know, this is what we had. And this was in Manchester. This wasn't way back in Ireland. This was in Manchester, the first house me and Mary had. And there was a little kitchen off there. And you know the cistern that you pull the chain? The cistern was in the kitchen. So when you went out to the bathroom, out to the toilet, you'd done your business or whatever, and then you came in and you had to pull the chain from the inside in the house, in the kitchen. Is that right, Mary? Now I'm going to tell you a little story, a true story. <laughs> this lady went out that was visiting us from Ireland and she went out to the bathroom and she's out in the toilet. And as soon as she sat down on the toilet, guess what? I was in the kitchen. <laughs> and I got the chain and I pulled the chain. She could have been halfway through. Well, I just pulled the chain. She was a lovely lady. She loved me. <laughs> but she came in and she was astonished. She said, I, she said, I was in the toilet. She said, the, the chain went on its own. I said, it's automatic. <laughs> and then she says to me, <laughs> She says to me, my son has got one of them in Ireland. <laughs> That's a true story, honest. That's a true story. But there's many things that you and I can be thankful for. You know, when I see that little house there in Union Street down in Russian, and you know what was on our floors? You know, flags? You know the flags that the council use? The, those flags for their floor. I mean, you, you put a bit of lino down because it's a little bit cold for the kids. You couldn't have them running <laughs> along on the flags. They'd catch their little fingers in the flags or be able to pick out the rubbish in the flag. But we used to put some lino down then. It wasn't cushion floor. It wasn't tiles or anything like that. It was actually like lino. And we'd put down the lino and the lino would be, we'd have that lino polished and clean and gleaming. You know, be gleaming. But the, after a while, you see all the shapes of the, flag, the flags in the, in the line. I'm saying that to, to show you where we started from and where God has brought us to because of the plan in, the, in, 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 in our lives. Because he had that plan for our lives. And he took us from that little house, £1.50 a week, down in, <laughs> down in Rusham, and... From that, God has been walking in our lives. But we didn't realize he was walking behind the scenes, Ras. We were blind to all that. Because we weren't saved, we were in darkness. We didn't know about God. We knew about the church and all that kind of thing. And we knew about different, but we never knew God. We knew Jesus, but we never really knew about him. We knew about Christmas and Easter and funerals and christenings and all of those. We knew about, all, we knew about them all. But we never had a personal relationship. We didn't know him intimately. We didn't know that he wanted to come into our hearts and come into our lives and to be a part of our life and work a plan out in our life that, stop, that would stop us messing our lives up. And we did mess our lives up. And we had to get divorced. And we were divorced for over three years. And then by the glory of God, I got saved. God opened my eyes. He switched on the light. And I got saved. I got born again. And God changed me. The plan started to work out in my life. And Mary seen that. And then God saved her and changed her. And all those years ago, God brought us back together. I think it was 81 Mary or something. And we've been married again since 1981. And I'm saying this to, I'm saying this to say to you this morning that we never realized or knew about the plan. But the plan was always there. And God brought us together, and God, uh, God brought us all, you know, he's living in that little house in Union Street there. But God has brought us all over the world, preaching the gospel, sharing our testimony, testimony about the great things that God can do. See, from one generation to another, we need to share his goodness. And we're always talking about what God has done. It doesn't matter who they are. You know, I'm with Mary sometimes, you know, on the Civic or whatever, and she'd always get someone to talk to, and she'd be talking to them about the plan of God, how God saved us, how we were divorced, how God's got a plan for you, how God can help you in your life. And I'm saying that to you this morning, that we're missing out because we fail to enter into that which God has for us. Amen? Every good... And perfect gift comes from him. See, when our lives are defined by thankfulness, we're able to keep ourselves in the place 
that God can walk in us. See, we know that this is not down to us. When I seen these guys get, <laughs> when I seen these guys getting up here this morning, raging with all the fancy drones and all that kind of thing, and then praise God, grace God, and then Ras getting up and he's doing it, you know whatever. When I came in, there was nobody. This place, it was, it was quiet. It was quiet. There was no kids or anything like that. But then. We've seen the plan of God because God has a, a walk for this estate. This is one of the biggest housing estates in Europe. It's one of the biggest, except we've got one in Dublin bigger. But that only means we've got more walk because there's more people in darkness. But here in Whittenshaw is one of the darkest, is one of the darkest, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? It was, rather. It was one of the darkest places on planet Earth because people were blind. They didn't know Jesus. But now in the last years, we've seen a, we've seen a great turnaround. We've seen churches. We've seen the message organization being raised up. We've seen lots and lots of churches have started. People have begun to get saved and born again. And You know, they're living for God and they're beginning to enter into the plan of God. But we have a real enemy this morning also. The Bible says that the devil or the thief he came to what? He came to kill, he came to steal, and he came to destroy. But Jesus said that I have come to fulfill the plan. I have come to perfect that which concerns you. I've got a plan for your life. And if you will only open up your heart and enter in and stop doing your own thing and yield your life over to him, give way to him, and allow him to walk in your life, that plan and that purpose will come to pass. You will be fulfilled and you will be the man or the woman or the child that God has called you to be. But it's up to us this morning. Can you say amen? It's all up to us. We can reject it. We can kick it out. We can play with it. We can leave it for another 30 years in the hope that we might have time to jump on the bandwagon at the end, as it were. But living a life of gratitude is like living a life of praise. I thank God. God every single day for my life. I thank God because I know as I begin to thank him for all that he's done for me, all that he's doing for me, and all that he's going to do for me. It's not just a life of praise, but it's a, it's a life of living praise. It's not just being thankful and having a right attitude, but it's, been living, it's living a life of praise. It's being thankful to God for every single thing. And thankfulness, I haven't got time to go into the other three. <laughs> being thankfulness, being thankful rather, is one element, is just one element. Being thankful is just one element of a yielded heart. It's known that where would I be without him? Where would I be if he hadn't have woke me up this morning? Where would I be without him? See, some of you in this place don't even know him. You don't even know who I'm talking about. But he wants to reveal himself to you this morning. He wants you to know that you can fit into this plan also. He wants to, you to know that he can come into your life should you open your heart this morning and say, Lord Jesus, I want some of that that Pastor Mike has been speaking about. I don't understand it all, but I do know that I'm not living the yielded life. I do know that I'm not living a life that's pleasing to you, Lord. I do know that I'm just living and doing my own thing and hoping and waiting, uh, you know, that, that good things might happen. Living a life of thankfulness, a life of humility before God and others and remain yielded to God, as you, you and I yield our life. You know, we come to that, 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 that crossroad, we come to that, cross, that, that, that uh, uh, end of the road, and we see that sign, and it says yield. And if we don't yield, how many know there's problems? It's like a red traffic light, Rachel, that's what it is. How many know what an amber traffic light means? It means stop. That's what number stop. It means stop. It doesn't mean get ready to stop. Or let's see how fast I can get through this before. The... It doesn't mean that. But that's what we do with our lives. We take silly chances. And we take chances without God. And hoping we can get through the amber light. Hoping we can get through, through the red light. But God is saying to you this morning, yield. Wait. He's saying stop. There's a plan 
There's a purpose for your life. And if you open up your heart and open up your life and invite me to come into your life and into your heart, I will help you to fulfill that purpose in your life. I will give you satisfaction. I will give you joy. I will give you strength. I will give you encouragement. That's what, uh, 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 what's his name was saying? But David was saying that God, he said, gives me strength and gives me encouragement. I'm encouraged this morning when I see what's going on in that place. When I see all them little kids toddling out there, out to the, t- the, the, the Sunday school. When I see all the things with Pastor Ras and, and um, Mills, the, all the things that they're doing. And Pastor Terence and, and, and Portia and Fabian and his wife, J- Jaya. And all you guys as well that are involved in ministry. When I look at Pastor, uh, when, when I look at um, my friend Dr. Patrick, when I, when I look at Patrick, I said to him when he came to this place, I'll, th- I'll sort of close on this, Russ. I will close on this. I won't sort of close on this. I'll close on this. When he came into this place, and I said, Patrick, I said, what are you here for? And I thought he was a Nigerian bishop. Because <laughs> I've met loads of Nigerian bishops or Nigerian. And, I thought, and he said, I said, Patrick, I said, what have you come here for? And he said, Pastor Mike, he said, I've come here for you. I've come here to pray for you really needed them. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, I never never give another bat in another eyelid. But a couple of months down the line, what happened to me, I broke my leg really bad. And when I was in the hospital, a month or two before Dr. Patrick got a job in the hospital, the same hospital that I was going into. So when I went into the hospital, 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm in the bed in the little thing. And Pat- Have you seen the story? Stand up, Patrick. Stand up, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick, stand up. I thank God for Patrick. I thank God for him. You sit down now. But if you see the size of pa- pa- uh, Patrick, when he walked on my door at 7 o'clock in the morning in the hospital, I'm in this little room on my own, and I looked down and I thought, ah! You're not expecting somebody to come. You're not expecting God to send somebody. God was already working behind the scenes. And Patrick come in and he said, he said, Pastor Mike, I'm here and I'm giving you this book. And it was a little book on spiritual warfare. And he said, what you need to do, you need to read this little book every, every day. And it will help you all the time that you're in hospital. And right through the time I was in hospital, I was in the hospital, I think it was over three weeks, was it Patrick, something like that. And all that time I seen uh, uh, Patrick every single day and he was in the hospital for me, praying for me when they went to, to, to decide about me, me leg my leg, <laughs> when they went to decide about the work that they were going to do on the leg what they done they were in a room and they were deciding that they were going to cut off the limb and Patrick sat behind and he said you're not taking off my pastor's leg and he began to pray, and he began to pray, and they changed the thing, and he showed me all the, the stuff and everything else, but I'm cutting this short because it's Patrick's testimony, but they, they, they showed the leg, and, and Patrick praying, and God bringing him into my life, and this is how I'm walking today, all because, all because of the plan, all because of the plan, I can walk, mostly I can walk without the crutch, I still lean on it a little, little bit, but I just want to say, Patrick, I just want to, to honour you this morning, brother, and I want to thank you for coming to this place, and I want to thank you for praying for me. Hallelujah. The plan of God, the plan of God, but only as we open our hearts and open our lives up to Him. Stop living for yourself this morning, because one day you're not going to be able to live for yourself. You're going to be too old. You know, so serve God, the Bible says, in the days of our youth. Serve Him and give Him your life while you've got some strength to do the things that need to be done. Don't wait till you're old. See, people think God is for old people. I wasn't old at 28. I was still a young man, a very, very young man, but I led a very, very bad life. But when God came into my life at 28 years of age, I didn't know about the plan, Russ. I didn't know about walking behind the scenes. But as I, as I, I, I'm grateful and thankful every single day, I see that plan come into pass, and I know He's not finished. I know the plan is uh, 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 because He loves me. Not that, not that, not that. You might think, well, you're nothing special. God thinks I'm special. He thinks I'm very, very special this morning, 
And you're very, very special this morning also. You're very, very special in his sight. And he wants you no more to serve that enemy and allow him to dictate things to your life. He wants you to step into the plan of God this morning. And he wants to help you to live for him. Is there anyone in the, this place this morning? Is there anyone in this place this morning that wants to say, Lord Jesus, I want to try this. I want to try what Pastor Mike was talking about. I want Jesus to come into my life and I want him to be a part of my life. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you if that's what you want. But if you don't want that, that's okay because it's no skin off my nose. Do you know what I'm saying? I've delivered the message to you, Sian. I've delivered, you know, as best as I could. But now it's up to you. It's up to you and I to either say yay or nay. Yes, I will accept that. Yes, I'll, I've listened to some of the things that Pastor Mike said. I've listened to some of them this morning. But I know that I need God. I know I need to yield my life to God. I need to give way to Him. Is that you this morning? Hallelujah. Is that you this morning? Hallelujah. Please, 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 don't go out this place this morning. Don't go out this place this morning and say, Hey, I've heard a good message. I was really moved, I was really touched this morning by some of the top stories that Pastor Mike told me. I want to tell you, the presence of God is here in this place right now. The Bible says that where two or three gather together, that Jesus is in their midst. And what you're feeling there this morning is not just emotion, what you're feeling is the Spirit of God. And God is touching your heart strings right now by His power, because He's got a place for you in His kingdom. Don't deny the Lord this morning. Don't Keep outside that place. Step in this morning and say, hey, I, want, I don't understand it all. I don't, who's going to show me? Who's going to help me? We'll show you. We'll help you to live for Jesus. If you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to get, you know, every one of us needs to help at, with the first step. And we'll help you this morning. And if you want, to, only if you want us to help you. If you want us to help you. Let's bow our heads this morning. Let's begin to, just begin to pray right now. Let's begin to pray just now. All the children as well. We've got some children back in here. Elijah, we've got some children back in here now. And they're going to be praying. We're going to be praying with them right now. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying with you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to reflect on some of those things that I've spoke about right now. Begin to reflect upon them. I know the plans I have for you, said the Lord. Good plans, plans to give you a hope and plans to give you a future. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for that wonderful plan that you've got for each one of us in this place. Lord, I just pray for them that don't know you, Lord. Or, Father, they might be even here struggling with their faith this morning. I pray, God, that you will touch them, that you will help them, Lord that you will be all that they need to be. I pray, God, that you will cause them to respond. If you're a bit embarrassed to respond this morning, a bit embarrassed to say, hey, that was me, please talk to me after the service or talk to Pastor Ras or Belinda or one of the guys. We hope you've been inspired and challenged by this message. For more information about Withenshaw Community Church Manchester, please visit withenshawcommunitychurch.org.